Assalamu alaikum dear students uh, this is lecture number 33 and today we will discuss protected areas of Pakistan so this will be the uh, part first of that lecture outlines uh, in today lecture we will discuss protected areas of Pakistan and then uh, what are protected areas and then in detail we will discuss the national parks uh, we will discuss the wildlife sanctuaries we will discuss the game reserves and we will discuss Ramsar sites so we will discuss uh, each one of them in detail lecture outcome so by listening and watching uh, to the uh, today's lecture student will able to know about the national parks they did that what are national parks what are wildlife sanctuaries what are game reserves and what are Ramsar sites and in the the other important thing is that student will know about the Ramsar sites game reserves wildlife sanctuaries and national parks present in Pakistan and their status and also their status So we will start from protected area. What are protected areas? Protected areas is actually you can define uh, as an area of land or sea. It may be an area of dry land or it may be area of sea which is dedicated to the protection and maintenance of biological diversity and of natural and associated cultural resources which is managed through legal or other effective measures. so if you want to um, protect some area so you uh, must have some rules and you have to manage it through legalized ways so uh, to manage through legal or effective measures. so it's an area of land or sea which is actually dedicated for the protection of wildlife of in a country or uh, for the whole biological diversity or for the natural and associated cultural resources or you may define uh, this the, as a, a, a protected area is a clearly definable uh, geographical space which is recognized I mean that is properly uh, mentioned the gazette its boundaries and all the things and it is dedicated and managed through legal or other effective means so by, by legal mean I, I mean uh, uh, when you want to uh, provide protection to some place you have to provide security so it is like properly in the legal gazette it is protected so through effective mean through the government administrative uh, authorities you have to protect this area to achieve the long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystem which serves uh, as of cultural values or of great service to the ecosystem so th this is th this uh, definition is according to the IUCN 2008 uh, now let's talk about uh, the history of protected areas in Pakistan uh, we will specify or uh, lecture uh, toward the protected areas in Pakistan so first of all let's start with the history so when Pakistan uh, came into being in 1947 uh, it was a very critical and crucial time and uh, there were many problems uh, like our government was uh, it was a very newly born country and there were many uh, pressing matters and very pressing uh, problems and the government attention was not toward the wildlife but in the start the, the the government attention was actually to those pressing matters uh, at that time uh, Pakistan had no major plans uh, or programs to protect wildlife um, uh, in the first few decades or you can say in the first three decades but in 19 in the early 1960s uh, when the government Leila realized that a very huge uh, uh, like harm has been done to the 
uh, wildlife so when they realized this harm and when they realized this matter so in the nine in the year of 1966 the government of pakistan considered to constitute uh, a committee which was named wildlife inquiry committee now what were the tasks of this committee so the task of wildlife inquiry committee was to like the responsibility of wec was to prepare a comprehensive report on the present status of wildlife in pakistan and also to recommend a cohesive policy that how to protect and conserve or preserve the country's endangered fauna and also to maintain equilibrium within the ecosystem so this was the task of Uh, so as a follow up to the report and advice of the uh, wildlife inquiry commission or committee uh, it was decided to undertake uh, some measurements uh, for uh, the wildlife conservation in pakistan and those measurements were or those suggestions were that the creation of protected areas so the first thing was the first uh, like suggestion given by the wildlife inquiry committee was to uh, uh create uh, protected areas in pakistan uh, the second thing was uh, the development of a comprehensive legislature for the protection of wildlife so as i told you that there must be some like uh, legal ways or uh, legislature uh, when you want to uh, protect something so if you want to protect wildlife you have to formulate a legislation for that so the development of comprehensive legislature was very important so the second uh, suggestion of the wildlife inquiry committee or commission was to develop a comprehensive legislature for the protection of wildlife uh, the third uh, important uh, uh, sorry the third important uh, uh, decision made in the wildlife inquiry committee or the suggestion was the formation of nccw uh, which means national council for the conservation of wildlife uh, actually so the, the the formation of nccw uh, or this suggestion was also very important and had a crucial uh, crucial role in uh, the future of wildlife in pakistan because the responsibilities were uh, now on the shoulder of nccw that uh, what strategies should be like adopted in the future to uh, for the wildlife conservation and its management uh, another important step was the establishment of wildlife department in, in each province so now we have a, like a, a wildlife department in each province uh, wildlife department sindh wildlife department uh, balochistan wildlife department uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Wildlife Department, Punjab. So we have now wildlife departments in each province uh, for the look after of the wildlife, uh, for the management and conservation of the diversity of each province. Uh, another thing uh, was to establish wildlife research centers, and you know, it's without research you uh, cannot uh, do all these things. So uh, the establishment of wildlife uh, wildlife research center. Was very important. Uh, another important thing was to seek financial help and guidance from uh, like uh, international agencies to establish uh, protected areas in formulation of the conservation policies. So, as I told you or mentioned in the very start, that it was a very newly born country, and we didn't have resources and we didn't have the ideas. Uh, so uh, this was very important to take the help and guidance of the international agencies for the establishment that how to establish protected areas um, what were, were our what are the ways for their uh, like establishment and also for the formulation of uh, conservation policies so a financial financial and as well as the uh, policies uh, aid should be like um, uh, it should be seek from the international agencies <coughs> thus on the recommendation of wildlife inquiry committee the following improvement become possible uh, at that time 
uh, two national parks and eight wildlife centers were established. In 1970, the number of protected areas rose to four national parks, 18 wildlife uh, sanctuaries and 52 game reserves. Uh, today, there are more than 202 protected areas in Pakistan. Uh, the number is uh, now increased from 202, uh, maybe it's uh, more than uh, 230. But uh, actually, this is uh, th this report is according to the NCCW Pakistan, and that is the uh, of April 28, 1997. So according to this report and this date, there are 202 protected Asian areas in Pakistan. Uh, the total area under conservation uh, by these protected areas come out to be 11.19% of the total land area of Pakistan. So now there are uh, four categories of protected areas in Pakistan. Like uh, one is national parks. There are wildlife sanctuaries, there are game reserves and there are wetlands or Ramsar sites. So we will discuss each of them in detail. Uh, there are no areas of strict nature reserve or monument. But very recently, La Sohana National Park in Punjab has been uh, declared as a natural world heritage site. So oh, first of all, uh, let's start with the national parks. <coughs> uh, the definition of national park is approved by IUCN uh, at its meeting held in New Delhi and in India in 1969. We can define it as a national park as a relatively large area, at least 1000 hectare. And now, Number one, what is national park? It is at least larger area, mean at least 1000 hectare. And now number one, where one or several ecosystem, so not only one, but there may be like a, in a single national park, maybe there are one, two, three or four type of ecosystems are present. So it doesn't matter where one or several ecosystems are not materially altered by human exploitation and occupation. Uh, it means that uh, actually the ecosystem is not disturbed by any sort of human occupation or exploitation. I mean it is in its original state where plant and animal species, uh, geom uh, geomorphological sites and habitats are of special scientific, educative and recreative interest which con contains a natural landscape natural landscape of great beauty so this is one and the next is in continuation <coughs> where the highest competent authority of the country has taken steps to prevent or eliminate as soon as possible now the highest authority uh, uh, the responsibility is to to do or to take steps what to eliminate as soon as possible what what they should ex eliminate mean exploitation of any kind by human beings or occupation of any kind or by human being inside the national park the whole area and to enforce effectively the respect of ecological uh, geomorphological or aesthetic features which have to its establishment and where visitors are allowed to enter but under special conditions for inspirational, cultural and recreative purposes. So this is uh, the definition of uh, a nation, uh, national park according to the IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural, and natural Resources. Or simply um, we can define a national park uh, in area as an area of land or sea owned by the government and official gazette and set aside for the protection and preservation of its outstanding scenery for the protection or preservation of its flora 
of its vana and its natural state. So this is easy definition of the national park. Now uh, national park is accessible to the public. Mean public can go in and out to the uh, national park for recreation, education and such activities. But there are like certain acts which are prohibited uh, inside the national park. There are some laws under which you can go in or out from the wildlife uh, national park. So number one is that the hunting and shooting, uh, hunting of animals, shooting of animals or trapping or killing or capturing of animals is strictly prohi uh, prohibited uh, inside or within a radius of three miles of its boundaries. So in the radius of three miles of the wildlife national park boundaries and inside the national park you cannot hunt, shoot, trap, kill or capture a wild animal. Uh, firing of guns or any other acts which may disturb the animals, which may disturb the wildlife or interfere with its uh, breeding places or with their breeding season or with their breeding uh, life, uh, the, the breeding cycle is prohibited inside the wildlife park. Now filling mean cutting or trapping or burning uh, or in any way damaging or destroying or by taking or by collecting or removing any plant or tree therefrom. So mean uh, you cannot uh, cut down, you cannot tap down, you cannot burn, you cannot damage, you cannot take away, you cannot collect, you cannot remove any plant or tree inside or outside from the national park. Now clearing or uh, breaking up any land for cultivation. So you cannot cultivate uh, inside uh, national park cultivation is not uh, like allowed inside it. You cannot clear a land, you cannot clear something. Now clearing or breaking of any land for cultivation, uh, construction of human settlements, roads, highways, railway line or damaging uh, land for mining or oil and gas exploration. So all these acts are prohibited. So you cannot uh, like uh, dig land for gas exploration or oil or for mining or you cannot uh, uh, like put a railway line there. You cannot uh, make highways, roads or settlements, human settlements, houses or lodges. You can, it's not allowed inside there. Uh, pollution of water flowing into or inside the national park is also not allowed. Uh, as stated earlier, we discussed that there are 14 national parks in Pakistan. Uh, this uh, is according to the book uh, written by SS Ali. Uh, but this number is now increased up to I think 26 or 30 national parks are there in Pakistan now. But we will discuss a few of them. Uh, this is uh, the map. Uh, which shows a few national park present in Pakistan. Uh, from here, Hunjurad National Park in northern areas, Deosa National Park also in the northern areas, Chitral Gold National Park in Ayubia National Park in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Margala Hill National Park in Federal Area Islamabad, Lal Sohana National Park in Punjab area, Hazar Ganji Chiltan National Park in Hingol National Park in Balochistan, and Kirtan National Park in Sindh. Uh, Kherton National Park lies or is located in Sindh. Lal Sohana National Park lies in Punjab. Uh, Chinji National Park is present in Punjab. Hazar Ganji Chiltan National Park is in Balochistan. Duran or Hingol National Park is also in Balochistan. Ayubian National Park is in KP. Chitral Gol National Park is also in KP. Uh, Sheikh Boudin National Park is also in KP. There is Margala Hill National Park in Federal Area, Islamabad. Macheria National Park in Azad Kashmir. Hunjrab National Park in Northern Area. And Hendrip Shandur National Park in Northern Area. Central Karakurram National Park in Northern Area. And Deosa National Park in Northern Area. 
so a brief account of each national park uh, is given below we will discuss them one by one the first national park that is get the national park it is the largest and first of all uh, national parks established in pakistan uh, this park stretches over an area of 308733 hectares it was established in 1970 and it is located in the southwestern part of this park uh, has most impressive wildlife of sin and pakistan it's, uh, uh, what are those impressive aspects like number 1 pakistan third largest dam there is a hub dam is present inside this uh, national park world large, world's largest fort rani coat is present inside this uh, national park uh, centuries old graveyard of tong period is also present in this national park petrified wood calcified fossils are present in this uh, national park what are petrified wood and calcified rocks i will show you the pictures uh, hub lake uh, is also present in this national park which is uh, now declared uh, by mashir sanctuary so it's my, the, the hub lake is now a mashir mashir uh, sanctuary uh, uh, for the uh, breeding of mash for the safe breeding of mashir uh, mashir is our national uh, fish torpedotora <clears throat> this is a petrified wood petro mean rock and wood mean wood so a wood which is petrified which become which became a rock how it formed by first glance you will uh, like think that this is not rock but it's a wood and it's also look like a wood but this is not wood this is not wood these are rocks actually when uh, huge logs of uh, trees uh, stems of trees they buried inside the earth slowly uh, slowly and gradually they decompose and and that place is replaced by sediments and with the passage of time the whole wood will decompose the whole part will decompose the wooden part and it will be completely occupied by sediments and this these sediments with the passage of time will convert it into rock and which is known as petrified wood or this is the shape of a petrified wood so petrified woods are present in uh, kerta national park and these are the calcified fossils so like uh, the calcium deposition the calcified fossils are also present in uh, this park Uh, the lake also uh, the hub lake also served as a refuge for a number of migratory birds and this park was primarily uh, what was the primary uh, purpose of uh, this park why this park was established so the main purpose of this park the establishment of this park was to preserve and protect wild goat of sin and sheep of sin this is a uh, sin wildlife department logo and you can see the sin wild wild goat that is uh, known as sin as uh, sin ibex so uh, the famous wild goat of sin the sin ibex capra hericus which is locally known known as sara whose population was dwindling actually it was uh, going very down uh, uh, very fast uh, and the park was established for the purpose of his protection and thanks god uh, it is restored in the park which is now more than 4000 uh, the other uh, animal that is the wild sheep or gud or oreus uh, ovis orientalis uh, is also uh, protected in this uh, park and chinkara gazel it's a type of deer have also been raised to a healthy population in this park uh this is sin ibex uh 15 black bucks uh, were actually uh, gifted by the texas uh, usa 
these are kept in the uh, a center known as car center inside this park since 1984 and these were actually gifted by the state of texas usa a token of gesture of appreciation for one made earlier by the former state of bahawalpur so it was actually gifted to the uh, former state of bahawalpur uh, which is now part of pakistan but it was a state at that time so uh, it were like um, uh, gifted by uh, state of texas Twenty-six major species of mammals are believed to occur in this park, including uh, Sindh ibex, uh, Ureal, Chinkara, Jekal, Fox, Hyenas are there, Jungle Cats, Leopards, Pangolins, Rattle or Honey Badgers, Merivora capensis. These are badgers, but these are the family, uh, it's a family of badgers, but these are honey badgers, they eat honey. Parcupines are also there, mongoose are also present. The bird fauna uh, is also very rich and uh, at least 58 varieties of birds are present in this park which include hoopoe, finch lark, shrikes, uh, wheat eaters, wobblers, kingfishers, eagles, vulture etc. Among the large birds uh, which breed in this park are sand grooves, stone curlews, grey partridges and cc partridges. Hubra busters uh, is a regular visitor to these valleys. Uh, reptiles represented by large uh, monitor lizards, geckos are there, chameleons are there, turtles and tortoises are also present in this park and all common of common varieties of poisonous snakes of Sindh are present in this park. These are the references. So much for watching and listening. Uh, uh, keep in mind your homework. Uh, you have to uh, make a gallery of all these animals uh, which we discussed in uh, today's lecture. You have to make a gallery. You have to uh, search their pictures. You have to download their pictures and make, make a beautiful gallery of that with their names, with their zoological names and also their common names. And inshallah in the next uh, lecture we will discuss uh, uh, the remaining national parks of Pakistan.